Hey folks, in this lecture we are going to talk about exporting virtual machine as an OVF. So exporting meaning moving from one virtualization platform to another. So let's look at what is OVF. OVF is a file format that supports exchange of virtual appliance across products and platforms. When you export a virtual machine as an OVF file, you create a directory that contains OVF file and virtual disk files. You might consider an OVF as an archive of all the files that belong to OVF directory. So, in summary, or to put it in a simple words, when you're exporting, or you're probably thinking, why do we need to export? Is because when you have a virtualization running on VMware and you want to take a virtual machine from that environment to another virtualization, maybe running on Oracle or Red Hat or Microsoft, then you need to export that into OVF format. And .OVF format is just like every file has an extension, like uh, .jpg, .iso, .png, .txt. Just like that, when you export a virtual machine from virtualization environment it will convert it into .ovf file with some other files we'll talk about in a second. Now if you are trying to export um, an, a virtual machine, make sure it is powered off. So let's put it in an easier graphical way so it'll be a lot easier to understand the need of an export and moving it through OVF. So we have this hypervisor running on VMware environment and hypervisor in VMware environment is called ESXi, yes. And then let's say this hypervisor, this VMware is in New York City. Now you have another environment of hypervisor and it is running on VirtualBox, for example, or a Red Hat, Microsoft, doesn't really matter. And this data center is in California. And on the New York City data center VMware, you have a, a Linux machine running. You want to export or transfer that virtual machines to the California data center virtual environment. The only way it is possible, easier, is that you export it into or convert it into OVF. You download to your desktop and then you import on the virtual environment on the other side. Now, the OVF, when you are exporting the file or virtual machine, it has, these are the number of, or the list of files it contains. It has .ovf file, it has .vmdk, which is virtual machine disk file. It has .iso file, which is the entire disk image of the virtual machine. And it has .mf file, which is the manifest file, which keeps track of what is what other files are coming down with this OVF export. All right, so I hope this has cleared up your confusion with exporting an OVF file. Now, if, or for those of you who have heard of OVF, probably have heard of OVA as well. So let's take a look at the difference between OVF and OVA. OVA stands for Open Virtual Appliance. It is a container that ha has all the VM export files, like VM export files are .ovf, .iso, .vmdk. It is a lot easier to use OVA file when transferring to another computer. So an OVA is basically a tar file or a zipped file that has all these files together. So if you're transferring from one location to another, you don't have to transfer each file one by one. You're transferring .ovf first, .vmdk second. So you're putting all of that in a tarball or in a container, and that container name is going to be .ova. That's the main difference, nothing else. All right, so let's get right into our vCenter environment and let's see how we could export a virtual machine. So I'm going to log into my vCenter environment right here and we are going to look at Linux 2. Now, Linux 2, before we export that, I want you to go and right click on it, go to edit setting, and in the edit setting, you will notice that it has two disks, hard disk 1, which is 20 gig, hard disk 2, which is 2 gig. The reason it has 2 gig because this is, this virtual machine, Linux 2, is a clone of this virtual machine, which also has 2 gig. But anyway, we wanted to make things simpler, so what I will do is, first of all, it is powered off, make sure it is. Right click, edit settings, and let's get rid of the second disk. 
Now you could export with two discs, three discs, four discs, as many discs as it has. It does not matter. But I wanted to have my transfer to take place a lot faster. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this disc and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Reconfigure virtual machine completed. Beautiful. So it's gone. You can also check in the hard disk right here. It only has one gig. Now let's go back and right click on this virtual machine. Go to template and click on export OVF template. Okay, in this um, wizard, it is going to ask you the name. If you want to change the name, you can. And the format is OVF. Now, if you notice right here, it is not selectable or not changeable. But the other versions of vSphere has the option to actually select and, sc and scroll down and select either OVF or OVA. But anyway, if you're not getting that option, you could actually use the tarball or VMF tool to convert that into OVA. So leave that all default for now and click OK. Okay, so the download of these packages have started. As you notice right here, export OVM template, uh, OVF package. The first package will come down is the VMDK. Click OK, save your file. Second one is Linux2.OVF, save file. And the second and third one is ISO image. Save, click OK. So the OVF file has been completed, the download. The second one is the VMD, uh, second one ISO. The third one is VMDK. We'll give it some time to download. I will go ahead and fast forward. Okay, so as soon as the download of other files are completed, now you're going to get the .mf file at the end. Go ahead and click Save that one as well. Okay, that one is saved too. So if you go to your desktop, you're going to see these files. This one, which is a VMDK file, the other one is ISO image, and the other one is OVF, and the other one is manifest file. So if you double click on it, I already have opened it before and you could open it in um, text uh, format or, or text editor, you will notice that it has information of the MDK OVF ISO. So now if you want to export this file to, of, or sorry, the file has been already been exported. Now if you want to import this file to another virtualization pl platform, you could open up another virtualization platform. I have um, already installed which is Oracle VirtualBox. This is the one I have already installed. If you do not have this installed, all you have to do is go to your in, uh, internet browser, go to Google, type download VirtualBox and then go to downloads and pick the one your platform is. If you're running Windows, click on Windows and it will uh, download the .xce file and then once it's downloaded you could run it and it will install the virtual box for you. So let's go back. So this is my virtual box. Now in the virtual box go to file, click on import appliance and here it will ask you where is that file, the import OF file located. It says please choose a file to import a virtual appliance from. Virtual box currently supports importing appliances saved in the open virtualization flat platform which we already have so select this folder button go to the location where these download these files are downloaded it is downloaded on my desktop and pick the OVA file open virtualization file click on it and click open click next now it's giving you all the information that actually came down with it. It is a guest operating system is Red Hat, one CPU, one gig of RAM, DVD, and all the hardware that it has to create. Click import. Now this file is being imported as right now it's going to take a few minutes once the import is completely done, then you're going to notice in the back of this 
where I have my uh, virtual box window open you will see the virtual machine that will be created oops it's already done that was fast you see right here this is that virtual machine that's created now if I power on this button by click start you're gonna see this Linux machine is exactly the same machine that we have in our virtualization uh, VMware platform so that's how you actually export and that's the reason of exporting and you put, export it in OVF and then you import it in another virtualization platform. I'll see you in the next lecture.